Hey, it's David Greenfield, CEO of Met Council. When Ben came into my office a few months ago and said, hey boss, I have a crazy idea. Let's do a celebrity fundraiser for Purim. I said, that's great. I have a crazier idea. Let's not charge any money. Ben said, how are we gonna make money? And I said, look, you gotta have faith. It's the middle of a pandemic. Those who can will give a little bit extra to make sure that they're covering those who can't. So we're asking, take a minute today. This production is only to help those who have been impacted by COVID-19 right here in our communities. That's 300,000 people that Met Council has helped this past year, who with your generous funding, we can keep helping, so donate now. Enjoy the live stream. You know I have a sense of humor because I'm a Giants fan. can't hear you, but I know you can hear me. Howie, just I want everyone to know with their cues, I'm probably going to say my name is a rim shot. So I'm going to be going, Heyman. Howie, I'm Heyman. Oh, I'm, I'm just reading it now. I just got it now. I thought it was something else. <laughs> Do you think it was a, just, a satyr? <laughs> he said, can you play Mordecai? And I went, okay. And it goes, it's a table read. And I didn't even connect it to Purim. So now I Google <laughs> Mordecai. And in Cartoon Network from 2012 and 2016, there was Mordecai and Rigby. <laughs> um, so I was looking at Mordecai and Rigby. And I'm thinking, what is it? Why is he? Why is there a reading of this show? Can't hear you, Jeff. Do you sure you don't have that little red thing? Try talking louder. Like this? Yeah, yeah that. Yeah, use your outside voice. Here's another Torontonian or Brampton Knight. Look at that. A lot of Canadians. Hello, Russell. Russell. Hello, Russell. Hi, everybody. I miss you. Hello, Robert. Hello, Russell. Hello, Robert Saget. Robert. <laughs> Robert Saget. <laughs> Hi, Barry Weiss. Hi, Barry. Barry, Weiss, Barry Weiss famously worked for the New York Times and left very publicly when she felt that it was just too anti-Semitic. I so, love Barry Weiss. Weiss. Barry Weiss, do you, are you annoyed that that's explained any time? <laughs> <laughs> so this is why we picked her to be Queen Esther. She's the only outsider as far as comedians go. Uh, and she's an outsider who, when she had to step up and speak up and protect her people, did so just like Esther in the story. Can we all have cool backgrounds like Judy? No, I did this stu that stupid Kung Pao kosher comedy gig virtually <laughs> this year, and this was the background. And then I did Zoom therapy the next day, and <laughs> I, I get on Zoom, and this is the <laughs> background while I'm doing it. <laughs> it's great. Oh my God, is it? Did you guys do it yet? Did you read it? Is it over? It's and all that's done. The story of Forum. Oh my God! How and, was it? And our host, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we only have two. Hi, buddy. I can't. I have. I have uh, no words. I just. I want this to be funnier than the three-hour Zoom shiva I just got off. That's the. That's the goal tonight. As long as it's funnier than that. Howie. Elon. You. Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry, buddy. And I you know. are such a trooper for. Yeah, I had to, and, and the and your brother and yeah, the thing yeah. is, it's like I, I I thought about it. I knew he, you know, we knew for months, and when it happened, I was like, you know, it's that light bulb moment of I have to make this in his memory now. I have to do this. Of course, I called a couple of rabbis. Each had their own opinions. I went, all right, no, they all unanimously said, unanimously said, you must do this, because not only for him and his memory. But it's something we call a kiddush Hashem, which means you're you're sort of elevating 
the holiness of God by telling the Purim story in this fun, funny way. And that's the goal tonight. <laughs> Hi, Bob. I love you. I, I thank love you. you for being here for me. I, I, Elon, I, just, I love you. I just have one question. Did yes. your did your brother pass so he didn't have to be part of this? <laughs> he, Bob has lost two sisters, so he is allowed to make these dead uh, sibling jokes. Wow. Are we done? I'm, I'm confused. confused. <laughs> this is the yes, rap party? we're done. This is the rap party. <laughs> That's Thank the you, firm Bob. story. Elon, is it too it late? Is. To say, it's is it already too... so cut. We missed it. <laughs> yeah. Elon, is it too late to say no? <laughs> Can we all align on how we're going to pronounce Ahashverosh? Because I went to Yeshiva, and that's how I say it. But Oh, it's Ahashverosh. It? I think I everybody Yeshiva. here says it differently. It adds a twist to this story. <laughs> Works for me. Smigel, are we going to have to look at you or the puppet? No. Trust me. <laughs> no, I'm just putting you in as my background. P places, everybody. Places. <laughs> we're beginning. Uh, wow. This is it. Welcome. Welcome to Purim Funny Story. I can't think of a better, funnier cast. This is a dream cast. This is literally the expendables of comedy and also because each of you are expendable. In fact, we replaced a couple of you. And uh, this is what I call Ocean 613. Um, and that's a joke just for people that know about mitzvahs and that there are 613. Did, did anybody laugh at Ocean 613? Did I get anything? Alan Dershowitz is crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say Met Council, who is an amazing charity feeding more families in COVID than almost every organization out there. They're doing incredible work. Which and families? Your, your family. Your four families, Russell. <laughs> this is the best that I want to start right now. I'm playing the narrator. Why start now? Why? <laughs> oh. 613 is the audio, audio area code. I am I'm playing the narrator. We'll, we'll thank the cast individually at the end of it. But if we could turn to page one, uh, we will begin. I will play the narrator. And this is it, folks. This is the Purim story. This is the Megillah in our own sort of words. Oof. Here we go. Thank you all. I'm the narrator. Here we go. Thank you all. <laughs> we get it. You're the narrator. Yes, yes. And Triumph, <laughs> what, what are you, Triumph? Oh I don't know, but this is the biggest part you've gotten in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> We're all really excited for you, Elon. <laughs> 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 I hope this pilot gets picked up. <laughs> <laughs> our, our story begins as all epic adventures begin with a dashingly handsome narrator telling the audience how the story begins. Are you going to talk this slow the entire time? No, I'm going to go very like fast. It. I'm just setting a mood, Jeff. I'm he's asking, and he's on West Coast time, Elon. <laughs> Our story begins as all epic adventures begin with a dashingly handsome narrator telling the audience how the story begins. Thus, I shall begin. It's the 4th century BCE. We Jews say BCE, which stands for because Christ, eh, we, I do encourage laughter, by the way. You're allowed to laugh. <laughs> we, we are in majestic Shushan, capital city of the mighty Persian Empire, and King Ahasuerus, the most powerful man on earth, is hosting a party celebrating the destruction of the Holy Temple and the demise of the Jewish people by flaunting the spoils of their victory through the great banquet hall. And as we Jews know all too well, Yesterday's attempt at genocide is tomorrow's joyous holiday. Egg, A, Big Ten, Terror, Esh, my most trusted advisors. I sense a lull in the festivities. How might we lift the spirits of our esteemed guests? There's a lull in this script and we're on page one. <laughs> you have no right, Elon. The man spent one line. Okay, your line took a half hour. Jeff's took 15 seconds. <laughs> and you're yeah, talking you about love. <laughs> Where we last saw Big Tan, he was answering Ahasuerus's question. How might we lift the spirits of our esteemed guests? <laughs> well, your excellency, 
<laughs> we filled their holy temple chalices with lobster pork milkshakes. A good start. But we need to escalate the demoralization. Teresh is correct. And why does Achishverosh, why is he dressed for the Christmas story? <laughs> <laughs> we must bring out something even more humiliating to them, yet incredibly pleasing to our king, ruler of 127 countries from Hodu until Kush. I know uh, how we can demoralize them. We train them to spin on their hind legs by waving a dried salmon treat above their noses where it is just out of reach. Always works, trust me. Useless advice. <laughs> Dolores, have their official titles changed to so-called advisors. I have to do everything myself. Friends, fellow Persians, behold the most magnificent and holy ornament exhumed from the pillage rubble of Solomon's temple, the menorah. The menorah, BTW, is featured in yet another festival celebrating the near destruction of our people. Chinooka, now back to our story. In an unabashed display of might, the holy menorah and its seven impeccably sculpted candlesticks is paraded around the room. We Jews love our candles. Can't get enough of them. Our entire, entire religion is all candles and aluminum foil. Hey, who pulled that thing out of Liberace's tochus? <laughs> the, menorah, the menorah gets a fair share of attention, but its allure quickly wears off, and the crowd goes back to drinking and sloshing around the Grand Hall. Uh, honestly, Your Excellency, I think we should call it. This is starting to feel like a Sephardic wedding. <laughs> Once the buffet is over, everyone's just waiting for an excuse to leave. <laughs> Perhaps you're right, but don't let any of my guests leave without getting a look at my crown jewel. Yes, yes, he's talking about the one person in the city whom I would let neuter me, his wife, Vashti. Meanwhile, on the other side of the palace, Queen Vashti, the granddaughter of the Babylonian world conqueror, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, from the root word Nebuch, which means you poor thing, and... <laughs> Also, the phrase uttered upon the sight of Jeff Ross's face. I didn't and, come here to be insulted. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and the only palace uh, inhabitant with true royal blood. She's having a party of her own. We got any more of that opium lying around? Mama needs a little maintenance dose. Yeah. The maiden brings Vashti a silver tray of the best herbals. My queen, your royal razor. Get that patriarchal dreck out of my sight. It's ladies' night. The only reason we should be using a razor blade is to line up some of this sweet, sweet sugar, yeah. Basti! Fool, what are you doing on my side of the palace? This is, is this one of your drunken booty calls? Honey, you said you would stop emasculating me in front of your friends. Didn't we talk about this with Dr. Schachter? You're right. You're right, my love. I apologize. Now, what can your big queen do for you, your majesty? My friends are about to leave, and I want them to be as jealous, of po jealous as possible about me on their way out. Well, just show them your leather-bound signed copy of Leviticus. That'll make them crazy. No, they need that one and only thing that wielded under my control will prove that I... I ain't saying my name, and the true ruler of this unparalleled kingdom. Oh, yeah? And what's that? Well, my wife. Your wife? Yes, my beautiful wife. Um, I think you left out a few things. What else did Dr. Schachter suggest? All right! Placating my stunningly beautiful, brilliant, powerful, strong, but in a feminine, non manly way, talented and elegant wife, the object of every man's desire and the source of every woman's envy, the incomparable Vashti. Woo -hoo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Now that yeah. is so much better. Thank you, honey. So you'll come to the party? 
No, doofus. No, but you just said you would. Just because you say so? Uh -uh. Do you realize I haven't moved from this couch in six months? <laughs> I have hair growing out of so many places. There will be stereotypes about Persian women for the next 3,000 years, okay? You better check yourself, Akash, whatever your dumb name is. <laughs> Boy, you really are a damn fool. Can I get a razor? <gasps> you know, I, I, I don't like when you make fun of my name or, or make long speeches. <laughs> His blood fully boiled, the king unleashes his sword and chops Vashti's head clean off. Well, not clean off, it took a few hacks because of all that neck hair. Having finally usurped the power he craves, the king proudly parades Vashti's severed head around the grand hall as his guests look on in awe. You just wait till my father hears about this, you lousy piece of- The handcuffs are off. <laughs> the per Should I do Michael Caine? I I'll do Michael Caine. The handcuffs are off. The Persian Empire now belongs solely to Akash Barosh. <laughs> the queen is dead. Behold her head. Advisors, find a new maiden to warm my bed. Tasked with finding a new queen, the king's advisors conduct a meticulous beauty pageant. Haggai has been appointed to scour the kingdom for its most beautiful suitorettes. Along with Big Ton and Teresh, he interviews each woman with some very specific criteria in mind. <laughs> Have you ever had a boyfriend? Um, boys find me kind of intimidating. Have you ever had a hickey? You know, I've got one right now, but it's because a frog attacked me. Never. I work in the palace, so I don't have a lot of free time. Excellent. All right. <laughs> and tell us, what talent will you be performing today? Big shot, that's your cue. Big shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm training to be a... I don't know how to pronounce that word. Contortionist. Yes. Achashveros. Achashveros. Contortionist. Wait, let her say it clean. Go ahead. I'm training to be a contortionist. I Contortionist. Can't. Let her say it her way. Let her say it her way. You're right, yeah. Howie. I right. can't pronounce that English tongue. word. Go it's ahead. It's a cold read. It doesn't matter. Whatever you yeah. do sounds good. Okay. What are you training to be? I'm training to be a contortionist. Oh, wow. I okay. love contortioning. Uh, it's Hebrew for contortionist. <laughs> <laughs> the young maiden lifts her right leg behind her back and over her head. Sure. You're going through to the quarterfinals. <laughs> Give her a clubhouse invite. <laughs> Next. Oh, your mom. Hi, everyone. My name is Montana Tucker, at Montana Tucker across all social media platforms. And I'm going to be reading for the role of queen. OK, well, have you ever been in love before? No, never. Like, um, I actually have eyes for the king. Excellent. So um, when exactly do I get to meet the king? I feel like if I just, you know, like posted a story with him, I would gain all his followers and that'd be like a good look for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just show us your talent, okay? <laughs> well, I'm actually learning how to paint my own self-portrait. Ooh. The young woman extends her hand above her head, holding a small mirror. With her other hand, traces her image. I call it a selfie. Have you guys heard of it before? Uh, that'll never be a thing, never. You are a pathetic woman and a pathetic excuse for an influencer. Prepare to be pooped on. <laughs> Our story is about to take a sharp left turn. Next up is a breathtaking young woman from right here in Shushan. Gorgeous, smart, bold, and kind. The only problem, she's a, 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 a Jew. <clears throat> that's been done before, right, guys? That's like hacky, like that's like- Not that old. good. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, a, a Jew. And, and not just that any Jew. Like? She is the niece of Mordecai, the holiest man for miles. If anyone inside the palace were to discover Esker's, if anyone inside the palace were to discover Esther's Shidduch resume, the Shidduch could really hit the fan. Mordecai has prepared her for this moment. This feels like a good time for a flashback. Esther, listen to me. Just, just be yourself. <laughs> Did she say okay? Did okay. You say okay? Oh, uh, all right. But don't, don't let anyone know who you who, who you are. What? How can I not let people know who I am? 
Well, no, Esther, just listen. Give me a second. <laughs> Give no me a second. Uh, just a second. Give him a whistle. Uh, okay. Verstehst? You, 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 no matter what, you must not reveal the ancestry. Okay? In fact, don't identify in any way as a Jew. Okay? That means no sending food back at the restaurant. Don't mention Florida. No talking about people you know who died. No unsolicited recommendations of any kind. <laughs> 20 minutes later. Don't bring up Stissel, you know, the TV show. And whatever you do, don't dwell on your ailments. <laughs> Why should I have to keep my heritage a secret, Mordechai? You are such a proud and open Jew, and I've always admired that about you. I don't think people know I'm a Jew. It's just that I thought Jews were finally welcome in Persia. Half the people at the king's last party were Jewish. What are you, an optimist? <laughs> Half those people were not Jews. Jews are supposed to stay under the radar. Could you imagine if you actually became queen? <laughs> Don't worry, that is not going to happen. Just keep your eyes peeled for the anti-Semitism. I only pray you know how to recognize. Verstehst? Mordechai, please. I, I wrote the... Another... I wrote the book on it. <laughs> You're right. You are right. Okay, yes, it's time to go. Stay safe. I'll visit the royal courtyard every day, and I'm going to check on you. And so ends our flashback as Esther makes her debut in the palace. Good morrow, gentlemen. Ooh-wee! What a... must be a shiksa. <laughs> <laughs> what a knockout. So have you ever had a significant other, an intimate partner? Have you ever had a boy toy? Boy toy? Most certainly not. I'm not a trollop. Oh, okay. Well, do you have a special talent you'd like to share with us today? Well, actually, I can build a chariot with nothing but three planks, two stones, and a hammer. She's definitely not Jewish. Of course she's not Jewish. Look at her. There's no buttress of shame holding her together. She's got great posture. Wait a minute. Is that a Star of David necklace you have on? Oh, this? No, no, no. A Star of David has has six points. This has you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I might have gone around twice. It was just a gift from my accountant. Oh, very well then. So why do you want to be queen? I'm not sure I do, sir. Remarkable. And finally, when I say eggplant, what's the first image that comes to your mind? Baba Ganoush. Oh, okay. Well, then break out the oil of myrrh. She's perfect, everybody. Send her straight to the semifinal. <laughs> With so many contestants, Haggai's pageant drags on for months. Furthermore, the king orders that each maiden be pampered and preened for an entire year before gracing his presence. Oils, lotions, perfumes, mostly free samples torn from the pages of magazines. And as promised, Mordechai swings by the palace every single day, hoping to hear some news about his Esther. Hi, how are you, Mordechai? Mordechai, the... Uh... A uh, Jew? Uh, well, I prefer you say prophetic Jew, but Jew, Jew's good. Jew's good. <laughs> you cannot be here, sir, and uh, it's not because of the Jew thing, and it's not not because of that. <laughs> no, I am so sorry. I was just wondering if you heard anything about my uh, uh, neighbor, uh, Esther. She's, uh, she's one of the maidens. Have you heard anything? I just want to be sure that she isn't being uh, violated. Sir, she's absolutely being violated. Now, Scram, Jews are not great for business. In business, but not for. <laughs> yes. I, I was just <laughs> saying, we would help each other, right? You play your cards right. I could even get you into the McGill. Did you hear what I'm saying? This is a very, this very exchange could make it in right now. Me? In the McGill? Wow. That's so cool. What the hell's the Megillah? <laughs> it's when somebody tells a story that's a little too long. Oh, <laughs> like we're like doing tonight. Yes, <laughs> like the precursor to this reading. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like what's happening now. Why would I ever want to be a part of that? I don't know. <laughs> it, it benefits Met Council, which feeds <laughs> families in need. I see what you did right. there, um, the Met Council. We love them. And we're here for them. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? 
I think I see where you're going with this. All right, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. But I don't work on Saturdays. Neither do I. That's a thanks for the help, pal. Oh, look, a coin. Is that a Derek? Ooh, Morty's gonna buy a brand new set cloth. <laughs> <laughs> As luck would have it, Mordecai isn't the only one hanging around near the palace gate this morning. Behind a row of olive trees, Big Ton and Terish are having a clandestine strategy session. Hey, Terish. I say we finally do it. <laughs> oh, what have we here? Big Tom, Parish? They never leave the king's side. Yes, yes. We'll do it at the big feast when he announces the winner of the pageant next week. Oh, that's just perfect. There'll be thousands of people there and plenty of suspects. Plus, that's a free lunch for Big Tom and Terish. Oh, yes. I have the poison ready to go. You just need to distract Ahasuerus. I slip it into his drink. Yes, we are very bad people. Yes, bad people. <laughs> Got him, Himmel? An assassination plot. I must alert the king. At long last, Ahasuerus chooses a queen and marks the occasion with yet another party. Uh, you haven't seen my ne oh, ne uh, n uh, neighbor today, have you? I told you, man, if I see something, I'll say something. I had a feeling about today. It is Tuesday, correct? Oh, well, here. Well, Tuesday is my lucky day. I was born on a Tuesday. I had my bliss on a Tuesday. Yeah, maybe not so lucky. Look, <laughs> look at this crowd. My goodness, there must be 20,000 people here. Is there a Kiddush I didn't know about? No, but there will be a Kaddish if you don't get out of here. But what are they doing? I don't know. The king has chosen a queen. Damn. I wish I had choices. Still here on guard duty while Big Tan, the insult advisor dog, has a seat at the king's table. The king has chosen the queen? Why didn't you tell me this before? I gotta go. This could be, I mean, she might be, I, I'm out. The guard opens the side gate for Mordecai to slip into the ceremony bleachers. Here, just, just between us. Thanks. I'll see you later, pal. Love to the wife and kids. I got divorced last Tuesday. Ah, oh, maybe you're more of a Wednesday guy. <laughs> got it on. <laughs> Mordechai runs off towards the crowd. Excuse me, pardon me, sorry, I might know the queen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, please silence yourselves, put your phones on chariot mode. I present <laughs> to you His Majesty, the King of the Great Persian Empire, Ashkaveros! <laughs> My dear subjects, is with great honor Ooh. and humility that I, your humble king, rightful ruler of all the world, present my new wife and your new queen. Okay, uh, I'll do Gilbert. Final bets, people, final bets. Three to one is the favorite. Uh, Connie from Hoboken, 20 to one for Francesca from Sicily. Esther of Shushan. Damn it. I knew it. One time. One time, man. Uh, sorry, all bets are final. <laughs> Esther? Was the, did he say Esther? Excuse me, I gotta get to the front. Pardon me, sorry. My cousin is the, uh, he's the sound guy, so I wanna, excuse me. <laughs> I'm mid the band. You're mid the, <laughs> the band. Say something, my dear. Me? Say something? Yeah, the people have waited long enough to meet their new queen. Let them see why I chose you. Okay, very well. I, I'm so Woo! I'm so honored to be your queen. It would be my privilege to serve each and every one of you. If any of you need anything, my handle on Twitter is at Esther the Queen, and please come <laughs> to the palace. I'll be there for you. Uh, uh, Queen Esther, uh, everyone, how about that? You know, isn't she lovely? Uh, come, on, come on, my Ooh. dear, let's go back inside and be rich. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe we'd spend some time with, you know, yeah, no, 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 subject no, people. Those aren't people. Those aren't people. They're commoners. 
We have no time for them. We can, can make time for them. Oh, that's lovely on parchment. But in reality, <laughs> that would cut into my me time. Plus, now I have to make room for a little us time, you know what I mean? So I'm afraid me time minus a bit of us time equals uh, no them time. It sounded like, I, I, do you hear that? Come dear, that lobster bacon milkshake isn't going to drink itself. <laughs> Esther, I am so glad I found you. Mordecai, how I've missed you. I'm queen now. Can, can you believe this? Well, I'll be honest. You remember I prophesied it, but I don't want to make this. It's not about me. Listen, two of the king's men are planning. This is just a plan. <laughs> hey, my queen, is uh, the Zionist bothering you? <laughs> Your Highness, you can't. How dare you speak to me directly, Zionist? Now, come along, Esther, dear. Your perfect life awaits you with all the money, status, and woman, women you could ever dream of. Goodbye, Mordechai. I'll visit you at the gate soon. So, Big Ten and Parish are going to poison the king. So, this is the plan. Make sure that the king does not drink anything. And generally, he needs to cut down on the uh, sodium. It's too much salt all the time. But that's a different conversation. Esther, if he dies, you will be unable to play your role in our re redemption. Exactly. Come along, your majesty. Let's leave this poor globalist alone. Bye, Mordechai. Okay. Tell the king that I told you all this information about the poison plot thing. Okay? That's plan A. Okay. You know, if it comes up, don't do it unless it comes up organically. I don't want you to have like to shoehorn it into a conversation. But if you find the right time to tell him, I would certainly appreciate, I'm just saying, mentioning my name. <laughs> if it's not too much time. <laughs> okay. Oh my God! At the at the grand feast, Esther manages to swipe away the king's goblet just as Big Tom pulls out his vial of poison. The plot is foiled. Big Tom and Teresh are hanged in the palace courtyard. Esther has proven her loyalty, and Mordechai has earned the ultimate IOU. Achashverosh has the incident recorded in his book of records, the official tome filled with the history and particulars of the realm, and where the king doodles a uh, heart with the words, Mr. Tiffany Amber Thiessen. <laughs> with two other advisors out of the picture, Achashverosh adds some new blood to his council. To fill the role of chief advisor, he elevates a young, power-hungry narcissist with a one-track mind and a three-cornered hat, who will stop at nothing to get the respect he so deeply craves. His name is... Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, that, no, 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 but but good guess. Uh, actually, it is Haman. Oh, boo! 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 Oh, no, 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 no. Hamilton is better. <laughs> yes, boo! Indeed, this man is evil incarnate. Despicable, abhorrent, soulless, like an ancient version of Bob Saget. <laughs> Ironically, our villain tonight is being played by America's sweetheart, Mr. Bob Saget. <laughs> a descendant of Amalek, his ancestors have been trying and failing to eviscerate the Jewish race for centuries and subsequently creating a bunch more festive holidays for us. Haman... <laughs> is a ticking time bomb. All he needs is a little spark. I was told my name was Haman for years, all through my bar mitzvah, so I prefer you call me Haman, not Haman, you strange Jew. And the words I'm about to say have nothing to do with my own personal feelings, you odd Jew. Haggai, why isn't that filthy, Soros-funded individual bowing <laughs> down to me? <laughs> Hey, he could be blind, I guess. Jew! Are you blind? 
Vos? Me? Vos. No, but uh, according to my wife, I am deaf and often dumb, but I was never, I'm not blind. I'm Silence! Not, okay. Have you no respect for the crown? It's all right, but I don't get why it has so many, like, Emmy nominations. It's good, <laughs> but... It, 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 it is very good, but has the king... His Royal Highness not decreed that all shall kneel before the wise and powerful Haman or Haman. Hey, real mature guys. <laughs> so with all the bowing, the kneeling, I get it. It's very nice, especially for you. But I'll be honest, me, I'm not so much a kneeler. Too, it's a very goyish. I I've been caught in a in a crouch sometimes. You know, I lean. I'm not a kneeler. I understand. Very well. We've no time for this poppycock. <laughs> I have three other genocides to get to. Mordechai, should you live long enough to lay your eyes upon me again, Jew, <laughs> I strongly advise you bend the knee, lest you lose that vile orb from upon your shoulders. Ooh, isn't he a peach? A cool hat, though. Gives me a hankering for a prune cookie. <laughs> Back in his lair, Haman. <laughs> oh, Haman. You're, you're all saying bruised, right? Bruise. <laughs> Bru <laughs> bruise. <laughs> uh, well, you know who is incensed. For such an irascible man, Mordechai's irreverence is just enough to push him over the edge. I Find me two dice. We're going to cast a lot to rid this kingdom of its most petulant foe, the Jews. Mm. We must do this now. My Terminex guy doesn't come until Wednesday. <laughs> and the lots are for? To determine how many months we shall wait until their bitter demise. Yeah, sure, but why the lots? Can't you just, you know, pick a day? I mean, just throw a dagger at the calendar. What are you smoking? If we don't draw lots, this ridiculous holiday won't have a name. All right, good call, boss. I always like a good holiday name. Pesach, Yom Kippur, Tupac Shakur. Great holiday name. <laughs> Great attendance for those holidays, but Tubishva. No one's showing up for that, boss. Listen, I like you calling me the boss, but the stars see everything. Lucky for our king, I can read the stars. Ah, so just to be clear, is the number that comes up when the die is cast the number of months from right now or the number of the month on the calendar? Whichever comes first, roll them. <laughs> 11. <laughs> 11 months from now, that would be uh, Adar. Couldn't have been Snake Eyes. <gasps> Practically a year. You must have Jewish dice. <laughs> Adar it is. Adar it is. With the date of destruction set for Adar, Haman. Ooh. Ooh, against it, no good. If you guys keep doing that, we're never going to get through this. You're going to have to kill the booze. <laughs> anyway, he alerts the king to the peril facing the kingdom. I'll never kill the booze. I don't care what program I start. Oh, it's quiet in here. <laughs> As we speak, plans are being planned, schemes are being schemed, and the Jews are coming for your crown. Hey, and how do you suggest we root out these conspirators, these havers of allergies? <laughs> I just want to say this is longer than Shoah. <laughs> <laughs> I... I call upon the full strength of the Persian army. You shall have my entire soldiery at your disposal. Uh, when do you plan on carrying out this attack? In one year's time, Adar. Adar? Why so long? Jewish dice. Obviously, I knew you were the right man for the job. Begin your preparations. Take my ring. Use it to seal your decrees. It a little small, isn't it? Amon wastes no time setting the wheels of the genocide in motion. The entirety of the Persian Empire is now under orders to take up arms against Israel when Adar rolls around. However, 
There is one luminary who will not go down without a fight. Oi, heavenly Redeemer, deliver us from this valley of death and return us to the land. Amen. Sackcloth and ash. Oh, hey, pal. I'm mourning. Who died? Uh, a lot of people in 11 months. How's <laughs> my wailing? I haven't really wailed since the temple was destroyed. In fact, the only thing left of it is a wall for the very purpose of wailing. <laughs> wailing, praying, running into people you went to summer camp with. Look, 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 man, it's not that I don't like you, but it's just, I get irritated by every sound that comes out of your freaking mouth. <laughs> I thought we was uh, like uh, Mishpocha, everything all right with you. <laughs> eh, my therapist says I'm taking work too seriously. My hair is falling out, anxiety's through the roof, and I've been to the cardiologist twice this week alone. Oh, muzzle tough. You're one skin flap away from being a Jew. <laughs> I definitely don't want to be one of those these days. Said it, pal. Can you imagine being treated so poorly just because of our race? No, no, I can't imagine that at all. <laughs> Bad <-dumpf. laughs> Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Mel Brooks, Esther, what are you doing here? My handmaidens told me there was a Jew wailing in the courtyard. Esther, haven't you heard? Haman, 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 is going to <laughs> annihilate our people. And what? the king... Yes, I'm not. Oh, no. not the, the, he's he's given the king is giving his blessings. Slow down. What are you talking about? I can't be any slower than I already am. I think I'm missing a line. A coup? Am I? No, it's okay. Just what? listen. Be just listen. It's a I'm... problem we're having. No, nope. get back to the script. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> He got the king paranoid about some fakakta Jewish coup. They're calling it a coupanon, a coup, a, a coupanon. Coupanon! Like it's almost as hard to say as contortion. <laughs> oh. A coupanon. I, a coup. I cannot believe this happened right under my nose job. Oh, I know, I know. You, of all the people, should have been able to spot anti-Semitism, you must say something to Ashkash Varash. <laughs> That's Ashkash my gosh. We'll go buy some pants. It's like, isn't that what they make overalls, Ashkash my gosh? <laughs> yes. But anyway, that's his name. By the way, did you mention my name yet? I can't. I can't, Mordechai. Anyone who approaches the king without being summoned is executed. And he hasn't summoned me in, in 30 days. Esther, you must. This could be the very reason God put you in this position. This is our chance to end anti-Semitism forever. <laughs> I'm a yank. You're right, Mordechai. I have no choice. You must pray for me. I will. And you know something? I'm going to throw in a little wailing. <laughs> oh, Esther! Oh, yes, sir! Oh, yes, sir! <laughs> okay, I got the wailing. Meantime, you got to have all the Jews in Shushan pray for me, too. I will. I need, I'll, I need, I'll even... Uh, okay, you, you, got to, you got it. You got it. Okay, I also need to do something else. I need you to fast for seven days. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, 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 genocide is a, a shunda. It's a terrible thing. But not eating for a week? Okay, okay, okay. Call it three days. Three days fasting, okay? Don't worry. You'll do great. Remember, you were chosen by God, just like Abraham, Moses, and Sandy Koufax. <laughs> <laughs> and so, after three days of fasting and praying and some gratuitous wailing, Esther dons her finest gown and solemnly approaches the king's throne room, unsolicited, terrified she awaits her fate. But just as Esther had hoped, when the king sees her in all her beauty, his royal scepter becomes outstretched, and he invites her in. Esther, my queen, to what do I owe this pleasant surprise? My king, thank you for receiving me on this day and, and for not murdering me. Not that you've done that with your previous wives or anything. 
<laughs> um, look, forsooth. And what is your request, my dear? My dear, for you, I would happily give up everything, uh, <clears throat> half of everything in my kingdom, or in accordance with state law, whichever is less. If it pleases the king, I would like to invite you and Haman to a party in the queen's wing today. What you serving? Bagels and lie. I mean, I mean pork, but pork milkshakes. Excellent, my little shiksa goddess. Later that day, Achashverosh and Haman do indeed make an appearance at Esther's matinee. Still curious as to why Esther risked her life to invite him to a cocktail party, Achashverosh again grants her a request. If it pleases the king, I humbly request his majesty and Haman will join me tomorrow for another party in the queen's wing. That's it? That's it. You love a party. <laughs> you should have been at the last one I threw crazy. It was a, you know, Prius. Uh, uh, we'll be there. The king's chief advisor leaves the palace feeling like a big shot, unaccustomed to receiving party invites. You know, he's unlikable. That is, uh, that is until he runs into his arch nemesis outside the gates. How dare you stand in my presence, cheapo? Have you not heard the news of your fast approaching destruction, signed, sealed, and delivered I'm yours by the king himself? I, I've heard. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, how I yearn for the day when I can drink your blood and toast the termination of the Jewish plague. Ay, 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 ay. Please, Haman, be careful with, with the drinking of the blood. Later that night, Haman, Haman, Whoa, yeah. oh, thank you, arrives home with fire in his eyes and seeks comfort from his wife, Zeresh, she herself a descendant of anti-Semitic royalty. So, how was the party, Hami? <laughs> oh. It, oh. it was just the three of us drinking Mai Tais. It was a, a beach theme. It, it couldn't have gone more swimmingly. The queen even invited us to a second party tomorrow, and it's a toga party. Oh, so regular clothes. Indeed. I finally made it, honey. The cool group, the 1%. And you know how much I love the aristocrats? Everything's coming up. Haman. Yes, yeah, so why do you have smoke coming out of your eyes, coming out of your whatever? But well, well, whom do I see just moments after leaving the palace? That blasted Mordechai. That vile Jew who won't bow to you? Vile, the very same. Mm, why don't you just kill him already? Well, I, I can't just kill him. And why the hell not? The lots. I must wait until Adar. If Ahash Beirosh is on board with you wiping out an entire race, what's one Jew a few months early? Just clear it with the king. Perhaps, darling, you're right. And you know, I'll tell you what, you still gotta take the trash out anyway, so go outside, Build a quick gallows, nothing crazy, maybe 50 cubits high or something, and ask the king if you can hang the Jew from it tomorrow morning. The city will love it. A teaser, if you will, for a dollar. My God, you're right. What's one more Jew? I knew I married you for more than just, just your childbearing hips and sizable dowry. I'll get started immediately. Good night, my queen. You forgot to take the trash again. Oh, I'll, I'll take it out tomorrow. While yeah. Haman puts the finishing touches on his gallows, the king is restless, filled with curiosity about Esther's requests. Haggai, get in here! Your majesty! Ooh, you're usually fast asleep right now. Uh, is your crown on too tight? It's that Esther. She has my head in knots. I think I may love her. That's impossible. You only love thyself. Thy game? I know! Crazy, right? It's crazy. Oh, man! If I don't get some rest, I'll be a mess for her party tomorrow. Read me something. Something <laughs> boring. <laughs> Has the Megillah been written yet? No. Wait, 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 wait. That was hilarious. Can you say again, read me something, something boring. Has the Megillah been written yet? What's wrong with you? I'm sorry. I just didn't hear it. He said, you want, you want to go back to my aristocrats show? No, no, no. Wait, just give me a, read me something, something boring. Has the Megillah been written yet? Wait a second here. Hold on. You, Elon? Yes, Jeff. Okay, you guessed it on Curb Your Enthusiasm, correct? <laughs> I'm asking you. 
I didn't hear has the I'm asking you. It was perfect. Sorry, I didn't no, hear it. It popped no, on me. No, it's a big Kirby, line. Hold on. It's a big you line. It. Hold on. You guessed it on Curb Your Enthusiasm. You know, going back in my memory, I don't recall giving you line readings. I don't recall telling you to say something different. I told you you were great. That's what I told you. Get your together. King, did you take your medicine, King? Because if you have a heart attack halfway through Purim, we're going to have a big problem. We only have eight more pages to go. We can't lose you. Okay, where are we? This is longer than Hanukkah. <laughs> Excellent idea. Let's find someone we owe a favor. Esther is always doing these favors. I'll give it a try. Oh, now this is interesting. Big Tan and Teresh. Remember them? Those guys tried to poison you, King. Anyway, it says here that the one that called in the threat and saved your life was the media controlling Mordechai. <laughs> Mordecai, of course. How do we reward him? No mention of any reward here. Just the saving your life part. Then he's to be rewarded. Mm. Oh, are my ears ringing? Am I to be rewarded? Yeah, hang on a second, Pointy. <laughs> but, but, but your majesty, I, I have some excellent news that couldn't wait until dawn. Let me ask you something. If I wanted to truly thank someone, you know, and I mean, really give them the royal treatment. What would be the best way to show my appreciation? Well, your majesty, good heavens, I, I, I guess I, I should, he, he should be properly paraded around the city. Paraded, I like that. Yes, yes, paraded. In fact, round up your five queerest eyes and give him a full makeover, royal garments and a of course, the crown. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Is that all? Oh, indeed not, your highness. Let him be led on horseback, on top, on the king's favorite horse, by one of the king's ministers. So said minister proclaims to the whole of Shushan, all this is done for a man whom the king wishes to honor. My, my, that's perfect. Oh, I agree. Everything you just said down to the very last detail, go do exactly that for Mordecai. <laughs> Mordecai? Make it snappy. We've got Esther's party at noon and you better not be late. Take the main roads. But that, that would take me right past my house. As Haman parades Mordecai through the city on horseback, he is filled with rage. I did this once on a pony at a birthday party, but this is so much fun. This, this uh, is on the whole part like this. This oh. Howie, what happened to the rest of your head? This is Mordecai. <laughs> Mordecai, Mordecai driving in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> that is your head, isn't it? Yes. Oh, oh God. <laughs> All this is done for, for, for a man whom the king wishes to honor? A little louder, if you don't mind. I'm enjoying this more than I thought I would. All this is done for a man whom the king wishes to honor? Oh, God, I hate my life. <laughs> what is that ruckus? This used to be a nice neighborhood. Oh, look at that. Boys, come to the window. Your father's wearing a crown. Look at that poor fool leading him. That must be Mordecai. Boys, Get that pile of garbage you your father never took out so we can hurl it at the Jew. All this is Wait done for, for a man Wait whom the king it. wishes to honor. Now! As he passes his home, Haman is suddenly doused <laughs> in, filth, in filth by his very own family, recognizing her husband's face when he looks up to the window in anguish. Zeresh realizes her terrible mistake. Is this about me not taking out the garbage? <laughs> <laughs> when his early jaunt around Shushan is finally complete, Haman jumps in an Uber and returns to the palace and rushes to Queen Esther's wing. My queen, this looks wonderful. Woo, Haman, you are right. Did you take a second lap around the city? My sincerest apologies, your majesty. Apologize to my old factory system. They can smell you from Hodo and Kush. Now, now, gentlemen, let's not forget to enjoy ourselves. Here, ha have a drink. You might need it. 
Thank you. You made me a better man and a better king. It would be my great pleasure to fulfill any request you may have, even for half my kingdom. Today, my king, I do make a plea. If I have indeed found favor in your eyes, please grant me my life. What on earth do you mean, dear? Someone seeks to murder me and to slaughter my family. Hey, everybody, what's in these seafood patties? Is, is it Old Bay? It, it, it's, <laughs> it's spicy. It's fantastic. They wish to annihilate my entire people and erase us from memory, my king. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Who is he that he has the audacity to attempt such a treasonous transgression? <laughs> Jeff, were you channeling me giving you a line read for that one? Because that was perfect. You can't make up for it. I love you. I love you, and it wasn't a line reading, you idiot. I didn't hear you say the line. Hey, All the other no, times time. were line readings. <laughs> <laughs> the other 20 times were Four line more pages. Yes, this is unbelievable. Let's keep going. Yeah, it's good to stay in the moment, Juan. Um, <laughs> okay, so Jeff yelled at me, and then I go, and, and what, what is this dip? Everybody, this dip, it's, it's the crunch factor. It's its amazing. I, he is an enemy of the crown, and he is among us. Ooh. This vile Haman. Ah, the, the, the vinegar. Ah, it's so subtle. Are you, Esther, follow me here. Are you saying this man wishes to kill you? And by the way, is this your way of saying you're a Jew? I am. Oh, snap. Someone's going to have to put another coin in the decapitation jar. Amen! Yay? You plan to murder <laughs> my queen, my wife? How dare you? Okay, okay, yes, I admit it. I'm not fond of Jews. And by the way, am I alone on that? I mean, I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but you stamped those decrees. Uh, uh, give me a moment to, to myself in the courtyard. While the king is in the courtyard, Haman approaches Esther menacingly, knocking her onto the very sofa where Queen Vashti met her end. Your Highness, you, you must rescind your accusation. The, the king will have my head, and it's exhausting for me to give it to him. You, you can't be a Jewess. You're too kind, smart, gorgeous. You, you've no horns. Your nose resembles an actual human nose. It simply can't be. Haman, even with me in the room, you dare lay a hand on my wife? Your majesty, I would never. Uh, Haggai, get in here. Your majesty, are Haggai. you ready for your pudding with Molly Ringwald? <laughs> Haggai, remove this traitor from my presence and hang him from the tallest gallows in the kingdom. Now. Whoa. Mind blown, because I literally just heard he built a 50 cubit gallows for Mordechai! Oh, ah! come on, that took me like a week to build. Haggai, now! My king, you have spared my family and my people from a terrible fate. How can I, how can I ever repay you? You know, Westy, just saying, I've always dreamed of having a son. Another Jeff Garland, exactly what this world needs. <laughs> Within the hour, Haman. Boo. That again, enough, enough already. We get it. My head is in a bloody noose. What more do you people want? He's swinging in the wind, but don't feel too bad. He's got plenty of company, namely his 10 sons, which traditionally are read all in one breath. Harshandara, Dalvan, Ahmadinejad, Visasis, Gaddafi, Porata, Aridata, Parbajan, Gilabata, and Jeffrey Epstein. Although, <laughs> although some commentaries believe the last one hung himself. Mordecai, <laughs> on the other hand, uh, he's the king's new chief advisor. The Jews of Persia celebrate their victory by establishing customs that honor their heroes and glorify the miracles they witnessed. Three-sided cookies that, that shape of my favorite hat to commemorate my unprecedented rise to power and calamitous fall from grace. Thank you. I'm Bob Saget. Boo! You Boo! 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 
I'm with you. I'm, I'm self-loathing too. <laughs> We have, uh, so this is what we did, we made a tiny, this uh, noise maker thing. We made it, uh, it's called a grage. I know it sounds like a dating app for narcoleptics, grage. <laughs> and we need a grand feast in commemoration of my world-renowned parties. I'm Jeff Garland. We fast to honor the Jewish people's bravery. I'm Eli Leonard. Because, wait, I'm back? I thought I was kidding. Wait. <laughs> Okay, here I go. Uh, ah, because we need another fast. I'm Triumph, the insult comic dog. Woo! And wear masks. Are they mandated? <laughs> yes, but not the way you, in a fun way. Not because I'm <clears throat> crazy, paranoid, germaphobe. I'm Howie Mandel. And get blitzed enough to not know the difference between. Haman and Mordechai, or me and Howie, <laughs> <laughs> or my wife and her sister. It's a common mistake. I'm Jeff Ross. Give money to the poor and needy to remind us that the Jews control the banks. I'm Judy Gold. <laughs> yeah, Judy. And we give gifts of food to neighbors to help clear out our pantries before Passover. I'm Russell Peters. And you can feed the needy and your neighbors by supporting Met Council and their 101 food pantries around New York. It's the perfect way to celebrate the true spirit of Purim. I'm Barry Weiss. Cancel this. Hi, guys. I'm Ella Benson. Hi, I'm Montana Tucker with the most non-Jewish name ever, but I'm 100% Jewish, and I'm super excited to be a part of this. Wow. I'm Claudia Oshright, author of Girl With No Job. Follow me on Instagram. Beth Council offers social services for all the New Yorkers, including Holocaust survivors. How lucky are these Holocaust survivors? <laughs> <laughs> Victims of immense... <laughs> are you gonna... Everything else you're willing to edit and go over, that... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we also are helping all the victims of domestic violence, the unemployed, and seniors like me. What am I now? Uh, 2,400 years old? Do I say again, and I'm Howie Mandel? Do you have to say your name after every line now? <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we recount the story, the whole Megillah, twice. Because you never listen the first time. A frelich to all, and to all a lechayim. I'm Michael Kane. Guys, <laughs> this was amazing. Let's oh. do this again tomorrow night. No. Uh, I'm actually having my blood drained. <laughs> I want to thank all of you. It's an unbelievable dream cast. Howie Mandel, Barry Weiss, Jeff Garland, Judy Gold, Bob Saget, Jeff Ross, Russell Peters, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, Eli Leonard, Claudia Oshry, Violet Benson, Montana Tucker, uh, Hillel Fold showed up for a pop-in, and all of you, happy Purim. Thank you so much. Thank you, Met Council, for all the amazing work you do. I, I do just want to say in the end that I dedicate this to my brother, Ari. His Rolling Stone just called him a trailblazer. And Purim is all about the holiday, about sort of not being yourself and, and wearing costumes and masks and hiding behind, you know, sort of an illusion of what is yourself. My brother, Ari, was all about being true to himself. And that's what he taught the world. And please let that message be out there. Be true to yourselves, everybody. Embrace yourselves, embrace each other with love. And that's why he passed away on Valentine's Day because that's the holiday of love. And that's what he represented. Love each other, everybody. Happy Purim. Thank you all so much. Thank you. I know what you did, Jeff. You sent me the wrong Zoom link. I know you did it on purpose, so I couldn't be in the Purim play. But what do you think? You think that I don't want to do mitzvahs and feed the hungry and help out people in need? Well, I do, all right? And because of you, I couldn't be in the Purim play. And I love being in a Purim play. It's my favorite thing. I wait all year to be in a Purim play. I'm going to make you pay for this. You just wait and see.